guys, I want to give you a little background before I start this video. So this is an over-the-counter archery elk tag. Eric and I met up with our friend Jake. Uh, Jake already tagged out, as you'll see here. And I was the only one with a tag, so we were all working really hard to get me a bull. And you'll see in this video, we actually were on bulls every single day. It was a horseback in hunt, so that was really cool. We were able to use pack horses to get way back in there, and then some of the horses stayed with us all week moving camp. But it ended up, I think we were in the wilderness camping for six to seven days. So, you know, no shower, no civilization, no going back to the truck. It was really rugged and it was really fun and crazy how much work and effort you put into an elk hunt like this. I want to say every day we averaged like 11 to 13 miles just hiking on foot, which is crazy. And honestly, my feet, my legs, everything felt good the whole time. I was so determined to get an elk. So definitely check out this video and see what happens. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Enjoy the video. Oh, I just want to say one more thing, you guys. So you guys know if you're subscribed to my channel that uh, I do all self-filming. I didn't have a filmer or any film help on a lot of my hunts this year, unfortunately. I'm definitely going to change that for next year. But I do not jeopardize the hunt while filming for YouTube. So what that means is there's going to be a lot of voiceovers in this video with me just telling you what happened after the fact. And in the moment, I was getting clips where I can, but I was the hunter. I was the one with the bow. I was really, really focused on giving my hunt 110% as I always do. So just want to fill you in on that. That's kind of my style for these hunts. Sorry if you don't like that, but it's all I can do right now. And I really think you guys are going to love the video. Thanks for watching. Jake shot this bull a couple days earlier with his bow. What an amazing bull. It has the perfect shape. It's huge. So the first thing we did for my Colorado archery elk hunt is load up the horses and pack up the mountain. This was a horseback in hunt, which is so fun. I absolutely love riding horses. I grew up with a horse. So yeah, here we go. Let's get to the mountain. So this is one of the joys of hunting public land, finding people breaking the rules. These people drove their razor in on a clearly closed road and decided to set up camp in the right in the heart of where the elk are. For sure they're messing it up. Not only that, but they're just not allowed to be in there, which is annoying, honestly. People break the rules so often. Last year's 
So this morning was absolutely crazy. We went to move in on a really nice bull. I believe it was a nice six point elk. And I was locked and loaded as you see here. And as we got really close to the bull, probably less than 50 yards, we spooked a bear and the bear spooked the elk and the bear was making these barking sounds and the bear was running away, the elk were running away. It was crazy. What are the odds that we'd sneak into a bear that we didn't even know was there? <laughs> crazy. Fifty yards, literally, so perfect. My bow has been shooting so good this year, and this is with broadheads. So, as I said, we really were on elk every day, but this particular morning, we got the closest to me getting a bull. Um, I actually was full draw on a bull when the bull came in. We ended up finding out he was about forty-five yards after the fact, but there was no shot. It was in the thick, thick baby aspen so really close call it was a nice little uh five point bull and i would have been super happy with him as my first archery bull but it didn't happen but it was a really action-packed morning there were bulls and cows all over the place we literally were in the heart of the herd it was so cool and so much fun Yeah, whatever you think. Yum. That's the goods right there. Let's see your rolling capabilities. Gotta use Ooh. this part of the shell to Oh, not quite as good as mine, but quite close. But I still want some, babe. Can you cut me some? <laughs> you want some? Yeah. Like that? A little more. A little more. So you want half? No, a little less. There. <laughs> <That's where it laughs> Thanks, babe. So we ended up moving camp a total of three times. We started low, then we went high, then we went somewhere in the middle for a stretch of six or seven days of backpacking. It was a really long time. The nights were really, really cold. We had Jake's horses up here with us and Jake was up here helping us out as well, which was awesome. Jake is a great hunter. He knows the area really well. But yeah, as you can see here, we're loading up the horses. We're from the high camp now and we're moving to like a middle camp. And we just kept moving based on different things as far as where the elk are, trying to get us in a better position to target them in the early morning. And overall, it was just fun to camp on different places of the mountain. 
like I said, it was so cold at night, even though it's September, uh, you can see we're up here in the Aspens and it was really cold, but I toughed it out, layered up. It was nice to have the horses. So we had lots of gear with us and yeah, no complaints. What a great time. Let's move on down to that media middle camp. all right so sad day we hunted that last morning and just like every day we got on elk but just not close enough for a bow to make it happen we are loading up the horses here. We have a bunch of different pack horses and then some horses to ride out, some horses to walk out, all different things depending on the well-being of the horses. They were traded in and out. Um, not all of them could be on the mountain this whole time for their safety and just, you know, they work themselves like crazy. So we're loading them up now. Everything we have is in duffel bags and little containers to make it easy to pack on the horse. As you can see here, Eric is loading up this nice looking horse <laughs> as it's taking a snack. So funny, these horses eat nonstop. Oh my gosh, look at this shed I found. <laughs> I found this while chasing after an elk, literally running to get into position for an elk before last light. And I scooped that elk shed up on the run. It was so funny. Uh, threw it in my pack and then showed everybody later. It's actually a really nice deer shed. So now we're hiking out of here. So sad, bittersweet, but you know what? Hadn't had like a real nice meal or amazing food in what, six, seven days now. It'll be nice to take a shower, to eat some real food, go out to eat, all those good things. I'm excited. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. There were so many close calls. Like I said, especially that one time where I just didn't have a good shooting lane um, and the bull was at 45 yards. We were just in the baby aspens. This was really thick country. If you weren't in thick oak brush, you were in really thick aspens, but it was a really fun hunt. I worked so hard. We all worked so hard for so many days out there. And you know what? It just makes me even more determined to work harder for next year. Um, I kind of feel like, you know, I've tried for an archery bull so many times and just on these short week or four or five day hunts. And next year, I really think I want to dedicate all of September to getting a bull, a public land bull with my bow. That's what I've wanted for so long. And I'm not mad when I don't fulfill it. You know, it's fun being out there and working hard and you learn so much in all these situations that you can go use for next year and next season. So stay tuned for next year. You'll probably see me out there every single day. Maybe I can do a video a day hunting for elk and that'll be really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. It helps me out a ton as a full-time YouTuber. Thanks again, you guys, and we'll see you on the next video.